After Patrick Swayze's untimely passing over a decade ago, his widow Lisa controversially started selling off his properties. We were able to see that he had lived for years at his home in California, while Patrick also used to own a ranch in New Mexico. At the time of his death in 2009, Patrick Swayze was one of the most recognizable film actors in Hollywood, having made a name for himself off some of the biggest hits of the 80s and early 90s including Ghost and, of course, Dirty Dancing. As hard as it may be to believe, Patrick, who was once considered Hollywood's sexiest leading man, was in a long-term relationship that lasted the course of his entire career, from 1975 until his passing over 30 years later. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Patrick met his wife Lisa in 1970 when he was 18 and she was 14. Five years later, they were married and proved to be the exception to the rule that Hollywood love is never meant to last. But in 2007, Swayze began to complain of stomach pain. Three weeks later, he was diagnosed with late stage pancreatic cancer. Sadly, it would spread to his liver and in 2009, Patrick would lose his battle against cancer. Since then, Patrick's widow has controversially begun to sell off the remains of the actor's real estate portfolio after everything in his will was left to her and her alone. Something that the other members of Patrick's family are saying was orchestrated by Lisa herself. In 2015, she sold off Patrick's longtime home in the San Fernando Valley, California. And six years after that, Lisa would be back at it again, this time listing the couple's former ranch ranch in New Mexico. Hey guys, it's Kara back with another house tour here on Famous Entertainment and in this one, we're going to check out the former homes of the late Patrick Sweezy. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit me up on Instagram to chat and now let's get into this video. Way back in 1979, Patrick Swayze started his acting career with a role in a roller disco film titled Skate Town USA. That same year, having more or less just arrived in LA after being born in Houston, Texas, Patrick dropped $202,000 on a 4.5 acre property in California's San Fernando Valley that he would name Ranch Bizarro. Patrick's estate was made up of a number of smaller lots and included a 3,000 square foot main house that boasted a swimming pool out back as well as a horse corral with a hot walker and various other equestrian resources and buildings. The gable roofed main house was originally built in 1948 before being updated a dozen or so years later in 1961. At the time Patrick moved in it featured four beds, three baths and two fireplaces. Unfortunately, outside of those details, not much else is known about this property. It's also unclear how much time Patrick actually spent here, as this was not the home that he chose to spend his final few years in. Regardless, about six years after his passing, Patrick's widow Lisa would sell this estate in 2015 for $2.9 million in an off-market deal. Considering that only the year prior, Lisa had gotten remarried to the extremely rich jeweler Albert de Prisco, this decision greatly upset the surviving members of Patrick's family, but what happened next would make them even more upset. In 1997, Patrick and Lisa bought themselves a second ranch property just west of Las Vegas in the beautiful Galinas River drainage of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in New Mexico. Known locally as Rancho de Dias Alegres, which roughly translates to Ranch of the Happy Days, Patrick and Lisa bought the property from its its former owners for an unknown sum and would spend the last dozen or so years of Patrick's life enjoying this fabulous estate. With the rugged sheer rock face of Hermit's Peak towering over the entire space, this property boasts some spectacular sights of the high mountains. 
not to mention amazing sunrise and sunset views. In fact, this scenic property features over a mile of frontage on both sides of the Galinas River, including historic water rights as well. Other exterior amenities include a lake reflecting surrounding cottonwood trees, rolling forests with green meadows, and a wide variety of plant life that dominates the landscape. There's even ample wildlife including elk, deer, bears, lions, turkeys, eagles, as well as a bunch of other small mammals and birds sprinkled throughout the 7.2 acres of land. Meanwhile, the architecture of the home and site exemplifies northern New Mexico's historical nature. First built as a dude ranch over a hundred years ago, the property originally took advantage of its gorgeous scenery to host city folk looking to get away and relax while breathing in that crisp mountain air. Today, Patrick's house still contains some of its original furnishings, including saddles and brochures that were used to advertise the ranch those many moons ago. The buildings on the estate are made of a primary residence along with a guest house and support structures. The main house is constructed out of solid rock walls and siding and is approximately 5,908 square feet in space. Built in a rectangular shape, there's even a 1,400 square foot open air courtyard located at the home's very center. This two story building was built in 1920 and has been renovated beautifully since then. The bottom floor is where you can find a media room, office, gun room, and a utility room, as well as a bathroom, while the upper level contains six bedrooms, five baths, a powder room, kitchen, and a living area, all of which is finished in a combination of carpet, tile, wood floors, sheetrock, and adobe walls. As for the nearby guest house, it features around 1,200 square feet and is located just across from the main part of the compound, while being constructed out of adobe stucco, a slab foundation, and a flat roof. Other support structures include the three-sided horse shed built out of steel frame and concrete tile walls with stucco and rock exterior, as well as a metal roof. There is also a tack and feed barn that's almost the same size as the guest house. Over the years that they owned the estate, Patrick and Lisa would make some on-site improvements, such as the construction of internal roads to make accessing all parts of the ranch easier. Besides the beautiful setting, the home's location offers privacy and solitude while also being located only minutes from downtown Las Vegas and only a little over an hour away from Santa Fe. Patrick's widow would hold on to this estate for over a decade after his passing before for deciding to list it in 2020 for $13 million. At the time she decided to do so, Lisa would write, Patrick and I searched for our dream ranch for many years throughout the USA until we found this one. We loved its rugged beauty and the opportunity to ride our wonderful horses, camp, entertain special friends, run cattle, and be good stewards of the land. However, after selling the property to a complete stranger, Patrick's other surviving family members, including his brother's Sean, Don, and even his mother threatened to sue Lisa over claims that Patrick's will had been fabricated to leave everything entirely to her. Lots of tabloids picked up the story that the family was planning on suing Lisa, but nothing officially ever came of it. At the end of the day, it really just seems like Patrick's surviving family members were upset and feeling overlooked by their lack of inclusion in his will. And when Lisa remarried, they simply felt they were entitled to what was left of Patrick's estate since Lisa no longer appeared to need it. In many ways, all of this drama makes the already tragic ending of Patrick's life all the sadder. I'd much rather remember Patrick Swayze for his unrivaled on-screen charisma than all of this family craziness. Well, that's gonna wrap up this house tour. After looking at his one-time homes, what did you think? Be sure to let me know down in the comments as well as who we should feature next on here. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll catch you all in another video. Bye.